Okay, family, welcome once again to the Zoom. And we hope that today's teaching will be beneficial to all of us. We know it will because every word of Tatan Zambi is good, is food for us. So with that, we're going to go ahead and move forward. Um, Banika, would you open us up in prayer? Yeah, yeah. All right, let us pray, family. Let us open our hearts and pray. Oh, came but to you, Heavenly Father, Nzambian Pungu, Nzambian Pungu to Lendo. Patonda Masaka, thank you very much for your mercy and grace. Forgive our trespasses as you forgive our trespass against us. Heavenly Father, we give you all the glory and honor for strengthening us to be here once again with you, the saints, your children. Thank you very much for reuniting us to speak about your word. We give you all the praises. May your Holy Spirit take over this platform, this meeting, this conversation we're about to have. May your Holy Spirit give focus and attention to everybody who join us today. And those who are still busy for some reason, may you please bring them here. Those who are in destruction, may you also please bring them here. And those who are busy with work, or something very important, and they couldn't make it to be here, may you bless them, that everything goes well with them. Let your will be done. Let your Holy Spirit use us so that everything we say, it may be impactful and produce a transformation within our life. We pray. Amen. Today, family, we do have a very important conversation, and that's the title of conversation. Last time we spoke about something very exceptional and important, and which we say is one of the most important conversations since we were born. This one as well. You know, this one as well. We must understand this type of conversation so that we may we may stop and ponder and shake our life if there is something related to what we will be speaking today. The topic of our conversation is how to break generational courses. You know, but some people will say, well, especially in churches, you know, they will say that, uh, you know, generational courses doesn't, ex it doesn't exist anymore. You know, whatever your forefathers did doesn't affect you. Well, <laughs> it doesn't work that way. The world is spiritual. The world is spiritual. We are human beings. You know, the moment we are not working in line with the Tanzania, Mazulu, all the open door that our forefathers opened for the curses to enter, they will still enter, penetrate, and reflect on our lives. That's why it is very important for us to understand this conversation. And after this, believe me, if you really pay attention and put into practice what you what you will what you will learn today, your life will change. Believe me, your life will change. The, the you know the God, the Tatanzam we serve. We don't just believe in him, we know him. We know how it works. And this is the Nzambi of transformation. The moment you, you seek him in truth and in spirit, there must be transformation in your life. If there is no transformation, that means something is wrong. We gotta check that. And today we'll check through this teaching, how to break generational curses. We'll start off by reading the book of Exodus 20, verse five. Tell all right. 
Are you with me there, your Bible? Inketa. All right. Okay, sister, we can go on. Okay, Exodus 20, verse number five. Mm -hmm. Okay, you shall not bow down to them, nor serve them. For I, in zombie, am your creator. I am a jealous God visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children to the third and fourth generations of those who hate me. And get yeah. that. They still exist. Even human human beings, they still have they still have this kind of you know behavior if I can if I can say. Let me tell you something. If <clears throat> if you had an issue with me, my children or my child will not will be will not be welcome in your house. Am I correct, family? But guess what? The issue is between you and me. But my children automatically will be affected. When you see my kid in the street, you will, you will not even look to them, you know, nicely. Why? Because the moment you look to him, in your mind, something will pop up on the thing I did against you. <laughs> you know why we human beings are like that? Well, we got that from, 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 from the, the one above. Because also he says, you know, he says, my children perish for the lack of knowledge. And because you refuse knowledge, I will reject you and your generation as well. Your children's children will be rejected because of you. Why? Because if you don't know anything and all you don't know is what you will, your children, is what you will teach your children, what your children will learn, family, <laughs> what will they learn? Did you understand the question? Family, did you understand the question? Sorry. Ingeta. Oh, could you repeat if, that question? Ingeta. You know, if what you don't know is all you know, and you teach all you, all you don't know to your children, what your children will learn, we won't learn anything. Anything. And automatically they will be useless. And Tatanzambu will reject that. Okay. How to break generational curses. Yes, Mamatola, can you move on to the next slide? In order for, for us to know how to break, first of all, we have to know what is generational curse. All right. So, um, Matola, can you help us in the reading? What is a generational curse? A generational curse describes the cumulative effect on a person of things that their ancestors did, believed, or practiced in the past, and the consequences of an ancestor's actions, beliefs, and sins are being passed down. In other words, the generational curse is passed down from one generation to another due to rebellion against Satan Zombie, God. Exodus 20, verse 5. Levova Mu. Yala. 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 I'll give you one example, right? For example, the Western world, they think they are blessed, but most of them, they're cursed. Because when you see these homosexual things in their society, that is a curse. You know, Paul says, because, you know, because they've refused the truth in exchange to serve the creator instead of the creation, you know, most high, you know, uh, g gave them, surrendered them to their immorality. 
If you see what is happening still in Europe, all those things about gayism, homosexuality and stuff, is what used to happen back in the days, in time of Roman. Same thing. And they still glorify themselves, and they still, you know, praise those kind of behavior. And they even attacked as an African to accept that curse. That is a curse, family. That is not a blessing. You know, their ancestor started with that 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 foolishness, and now they are, you know, they are chi the, the, the children of their ancestors, which is, you know, men of them, they're still under this curse. And guess what, family? Some of them, they hate that. They want to run away from homosexuality and stuff, but they can't. That is a spirit that pursue them everywhere they go. They are almost, you know, they are people who are under the, 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 those condition, but they don't want to be. They don't want to be. But you know that that that, that spirit chased them wherever they go. They they are chased, and later on they just surrender. They open their hands, <laughs> you know. They surrender. So that you know the the, the definition of a generational curse in simple word. You know that's why Jeremiah, you know, lamentation, the book of Lamentation five, it says that our forefathers has died. And we have borne the iniquities. Let me tell you something. Whatever you and me do today and hurt so much with pain in the heart of the Most High, and if we do not repent and change from that behavior, that can impact your children and your children's children. How? Because that will be an open door. When you and me, when we sin and we do not repent, guess what? Demon will they will have access in our lives. That, that, that is out automatic. You know, that is automatic. They will have direct access in our lives to do whatever they want to do. Until somebody stand. That's why if you see the Bible, you know, uh, if you read even Nehemiah, Ezra, Daniel, 9, 3, you know, they were always re re repenting from the sin of their forefathers. They will say, our forefathers have sinned against you. And because of that, we're still suffering. Let me ask you this. How many of you how many of you, deep down within your heart, you feel like maybe something is wrong within your lineage, and that's the, that thing still affects you somehow? How many? Just say, you know, me. Ingeta. Okay, Sister Trish is there. Ingeta. 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 Yeah. That is true. Ingeta. So, that is true. That is true. That is called... There are two words. Sometimes there is was consequences, you know, through our own action. But the one that pursue us the most is the curse. Generational, generational, generational curses. It comes all the way from top down below to our generation. Even as African, remember, our sisters, they sinned. Let me tell you, the Portuguese, I'm from Angola. The Portuguese, they remained in Angola for more than 500 years. And until now, we still suffer the consequences. <laughs> we still suffer the consequences. We still suffer the consequences. They were lied. You know, they were lied with this white image of Jesus. And some of us still put that image in our houses, you know. We still bow down to that image, and we still bow down to them. That's idolatry. And some of us still still suffer, and not just that. Many things else as well. Our forefathers have done against the Most High, you know, by practicing many, many, many activities in which was not pleasing before the face of the Most High, and as a result, they are suffering. 
And let me tell you something about African family. African are very powerful. But there is something in which we do not understand, especially our forefathers, they did not understand. Is the ability, the power, you know, that you that now, you know, uh, 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 people called witchcraft. That is a huge and a very powerful tool the Most High has given to us. Back in the day, that power was used to protect each family. Whoever is an African, whoever is African, will understand this. I'm speaking about our own, our own experience. But the name was not witchcraft, was not the name. But guess what? When they started to misuse that power to hurt and to do evil against their own neighbors, that was transformed into a, a great wickedness. And until now, some still pay the consequences of their sister's act. Some are still under the, those course. Emily, are we clear? Ingeta. 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 Once again. Ingeta. Once again. Ingeta. Especially people in churches. Some, they believe that generational curses does not exist. It does exist. Let me ask you a second question. How many, how many of you, you know, had been to a doctor, you know, because you have a sickness and the doctor will ask you, um, is there any family in your blood, bloodline who also used to, to, to suffer from this kind of sickness? Is there anybody who was, who was once yeah. okay. You see? Yes. Yeah. That's a problem. First of all, sickness is not a blessing. And sickness is not good. That means if the doctors, they ask you that question, they know that sometimes if you suffer from this sickness, somehow, you know, there is somebody in your family lineage who used to suffer from this, this sickness? And guess what? They pass down unto you. And because of them, you still suffer from the same, from the same sickness. That is not a blessing. That's a curse. Well, some will say, well, that is just a health problem. Health problems before the most highs. There's no problem. There's no, no, no health problems. When we seek him in truth, we can have some headaches and stuff, but not that kind of sickness. No. Because that is not a blessing. That is a curse. That is not good. That is bad and evil. And of course, none, none of you here will be would like to be under that, that, that condition to accept that reality because you know that's not good. And guess what? Many of those sickness doesn't go away. The doctor can heal you and he will say, you know, unfortunately, you know, there, there is no way for us to, to deal with it. They will give you just some, you know, some, 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 some uh, medicine to calm you down. But deep down, they know that they can't do anything. Why? Because they don't, they don't understand that that is a spiritual sickness. That is a curse in which mustn't come out by medicine, but by prayer and fast. Okay. Yep, Sam. Yes, Pang. The next point, you know, has its title, the influence of our family bloodline, the influence of our family bloodline on our life's development. Matola, can you move on? Would you like to say something on that one? No, I'm fine. You can go ahead. Thanks. All right. Move on. Yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 Yeah.
please pay, do pay attention to this one. This is very powerful, family. This is very powerful. This topic now we'll discuss today is the reason why your parent or parents sometimes will block us from marrying somebody else in which they do not ag ag agree with. Especially if they know that family very well and they know the problems of that person. And they know the problem of that family. You know, the title is, is the influence of our family bloodline on our life development. Your success and my success, sometimes it is determined because of that. You know, the, the currency that flows, the current of, of, of water that flows through our, our family bloodline. Okay, Mama Tola, let's go to the point one, please. The influence of our family bloodline on our life development. Our family's history and baggage impact who we are as people, whether we like it or not. You may consider your family a blessing or consider them a burden because of the long history of negative traits they've passed down. Mm -hmm. Yes, Mama Tola. Our families have the greatest influence on our development, including the development of our patterns of sin. Some people even assert that family or generational curses are passed down along generational lines. This comes from Old Testament passages, which say that Tartan Zombie punishes the children and their children for the sins of the fathers to the third and fourth generation. Exodus 34, 7. Okay. okay. Whether or not families inherit spiritual curses, it is obvious that patterns of sin are passed down through families. Everyone sins, but just as culture, ethnicity, and gender steer our patterns of sin in particular directions, so do our families. We inherit many traits and preferences from our parents that aren't always a positive influence on ourselves or others. When we acquire a sinful habit or belief that negatively affects our lives or those around us, this is known as a generational curse. It is the shadow side of behavior passed down through the generation but is it possible to break this cycle of suffering? Ngeta. Ngeta. Le vova mo. Yala. 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 Does it make sense what we read? Does it make sense? Ngeta. 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 How many, you know, second, mm -hmm. another question. How many family, how many of you somehow feel that you are familiar to what we just read? You are familiar, you know? Yes. Okay. Thank you, sir. All right. Thank you. We see many people. Their family, for example. Um, no, we will go through the example, right? But family. The moment you, we, human beings, understand this, we will not take, you know, a family situation um, as a normal, as a, as a normal thing, as a normal issue. The moment we understand this, every problems, every, let me say, every family problem that you and me go through, we must look to that as a big deal. We must look to that as a big deal. Let's go to the example more to next the next slide. You know, let's go to the example so that we can understand this. Okay. Go ahead, Motola. 
An example of generational curses. If your family line is marked by divorce, incest, poverty, anger, being single, and no one wants to marry you, infertility, or other ungodly patterns, you are likely under a generational curse. The Bible says that these curses are tied to choices. Deuteronomy 30, 19 says, we can either choose life and blessing or death and cursing. Curse or consequence. Your parents grew up in homes with divorced parents. So they both like the clear picture of what a healthy relationship looks like. With this negative example, your parents developed unhealthy life or relationship habits and pass those on to you. You might be afraid of commitment because you are afraid of passing down the same trauma or pain that you experienced as a child to your own children. And this fear of commitment may prevent you from experiencing the gift and freedom found in authentic love. Get that. Ngeta. Luvu vamu. Yala. Yala. Another question. Is that clear, family? Ngeta. Ngeta. Many people, many people, they relate to that message. You know? No offense. That's one of the reasons, maybe, you know, that's one of the reasons also. I would say one of the reasons, not the main one. That's also one of the reasons, you know, you see in the in the USA, you know, you find a lot of single mothers. No offense. Because if you study the lineage, if you study, you know, it was this this was fine back even after slavery. Our family, they were well instructed. But now, that's why we, you know, the question is curse or consequences. Sometimes it is a curse, but sometimes it is a consequences in which you can interpret as a cursed because of the, of, of the life of your parent or your forefathers. I don't see that as normal. Family believers. There are many reasons in which you know, you know, the system is there to try to destroy black culture, these and that. Those some those are some kind of the reason, and you are you you are familiar with that. But one thing that maybe we don't touch a lot to assume also, you know, family. Sometimes we must take responsibility. Sometimes we must stop accusing others and think, because when we accuse other, there will be no solution. But when we stop, when we take a respons responsibility, there will be change in our lives. How many people, they are parent, they were divorced. How many people, they had abusive, you know, a father or mother, and now they think that everybody is the same. They're afraid of any, of, they're afraid of, of even committing themselves. And you find a lot in the USA. No offense to you, brothers, from there, right? But that is a reality. That is a huge reality. I get sick and I, I don't understand why. Remember, once again, the reason are plenty, are many, but we are focusing in one of the reasons, which is this one. Sometimes when, when, my fa when, when our parent or our forefathers, they, they had a toxic, a toxic relationship and our parent, they experience that in your family. Believe me, the devil has many ways to, to attack our lives, to destroy our life. He has many ways. And that one is one of them. Can you interpret that as a curse? Well, maybe. Because if you check, you know, the families, our next stop will be about families.
You know, if you take the families in the USA, it's totally destroyed, especially in the black community. It is destroyed. It is completely destroyed. And that, you know, that 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 thing in which we call single mother or single parent, no offense to you and for whoever he is, all right, we speak in general. That that is a spirit right now, is a spirit. It's a spirit that is jumping from generation to generation, generation to generation, and that is not normal, family. That's not normal. We must bind and cast out that evil spirit. Who told you that uh, American women, they're not, they're not uh, uh, women to get married, that for men? Because they say, you know, ah, women here, they are toxic. You don't marry American women. Who told you that American man is not marriable? Who told you that? Who told you that? The problem is not the men or the women, but the problem is spiritual. And because it is a spiritual, nobody understands. So whenever there's a problem in your family, they will accuse you or your parent or your sister or your cousin because she or he is a single parent. But the problem is not them, it's a spiritual. And that spirit family must come down. We get very sad and sick when we see that. I don't know how many percent, if it is 70% of 60% of the American, you know, parent are single, I don't know. Family, you you who are there in USA, what is the percentage of a single mothers and sing, single fathers, if I can say? 60, 50? I would I'm say not that. Sure, but it's a lot. Okay, yes, Mungana, you say what? I said I'm not quite sure, but it's I know it's a lot. You see, that's a lot. That's a lot. Thank you very much, Mama Anna. I was just saying that it's it's uh I guess you could say maybe higher than sixty, you know. Much, much higher. Yeah, I will agree with that. Wow. Yes, brother, uh, brother Allison, thank you, Alma, Alma Good. Uh, according to Wikipedia, it's 67%. Wow, that's a lot. That is a lot. Family, that's concerns. That's why we cry a lot. That's why we cry a lot. 67%, that is a lot. Single parent. And you wonder why all the family are destroyed. You wonder why children, you know, they grew up without their mother, their, 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 their father. I mean, there's no way for the family for the family not to be not not to be unbalanced. There's no way. There's no way. And there's no way even uh, in in a black family not to be homosexual homosexual person, because you as a man grew up with women in the house. <laughs> that that's not in Africa, you know. That's that no, that's not welcome. Tell them what you say about that. Yeah, no comment. That is not good, fam. And remember, once again, we are not focusing on pointing others. We are focusing in us, all right? Because sometimes we will say, it is the system, the system. Yes, we, we already know about that. Now let's find a solution. Guess what? The system is governed by wicked people. The devil is in charge. And guess what? The devil is a spirit. He's casting spells to destroy the families. And we must understand that, family. We must understand that. Another example of generational curses, you know, as we mentioned in point one, divorce. Oh, man. Sometimes you find families, everybody's, almost everybody's divorced. Almost everybody. 
And he asked, what's wrong with you? How come you can't keep a husband, you can't keep a wife for even a, a year or two years? What's wrong with you? And people, they just say, oh, no, women are difficult to manage. Men, you know, men are complicated. No. I don't think that that, that is true. Have you seen that, family? Have you, see, have you experienced that also? Or you know some person who who is related to that? Okay, Satrish, say. Satrish, you say yes? Yes, sir. Yeah. Divorce everywhere. Always divorce. Always divorce. Something is wrong. And next, incest or poverty. Especially poverty, man. In the land also, that spirit is, you know, is ruling the land. Africa. We are, we, 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 we are born crying in poverty. We live in poverty and we die in poverty. And family, that is a curse. We don't want to touch, you know, even travel a lot in the spiritual realm. But that is a curse. Poverty. And not because you are not blessed. No, you are blessed. And not because Tatan Zambia doesn't give you blessing. It does give you blessed. But in, in how can I say, in, in your spiritual column, you know, on your spiritual column, on the spiritual column, you know, of your family lineage, maybe a demon is sitting down there and deviating all the blessing that comes to you. And even fighting the angels that I'm saying to give you blessed. They fight really hard. And above all, if we do not understand that that fight is spiritual, we will never be able to get the blessing from above. Remember last time, last time we spoke about a stolen star and a stolen destiny? The devil, he prosper in stealing your star and destiny, especially if you, if you are ignorant. When there is a situation, instead of praying, you know, people, they just look to that as a normal situation. Well, <laughs> that's normal, okay. The family will continue to experience the same problem. The second one is anger. Mm, their family, <laughs> almost everybody's angry. Everybody's angry. The temper is very high. Anger, that's anger. You know, I'm from Angola, and uh, on the north part of our country, every almost everybody's like that anger, including in my own family. Almost everybody's like Brad Samba is there. You know, Brad Samba. I'm from Kimbele. You know, <laughs> we like to fight. <laughs> you know, there. Am Brad Samba? Am I lying? Can you comment on that? Uh, no, no, no. Um, people from Kimbele. The first time I met Frank Benik, I was a little bit afraid of him, I have to confess. <laughs> yeah, because they don't have a good reputation, but Benik is totally different. People from Kimbele, they like to fight for anything. And the fights not just speak. They get knife, they get object to fight with you. So... Any simple conversation can turn to fight, and they can, and they can kill you for that. Yes. Yeah. Yes, family. You know that is something. You know, I mentioned that almost or everybody from the north of Angola. You know, almost not all of them. Some are very humble and calm, but almost everybody from that side they are higher temper. They are higher temper. Here in South Africa, you know, here in South Africa, the tribe that is similar to mine is the Zulu tribe. They are very similar. Sister Khalifa, <laughs> same thing, right? They fight, as Brother Samba said, fight for nothing, even a small thing. Family, even when, what sister released, one red, one red, 
Because of one rand, some people have died. Because of one rand, one rand. One rand is like, in the USA, it is like, I don't know, one cent or two cent. Because of that, some, has some people have lost their life in a taxi. When you are in a taxi, in a bus, if you pay your money and, and one cent is missing, that's a problem. Or even, I mean, or even zero, 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 I don't know. One rent is nothing. You can put that on a, on your, you know, uh, uh, exchange. So these problems, I don't see that as a blessing. And when I look even, you know, sometimes family are talking, and they, they start uh, five cents. Thank you very much. One hundred five cents. Elder Mutar, thanks you. Because of that, they will fight you. They will fight you. And sometimes will cause people to die. That's not good. And sometimes family, I'm in Angola. I'm looking at the family. They are talking, you know. Um, the family that come from the, the, the people that come from the south or from the north. They are talking for simple stuff. They can, they can create argument from that. So the spirit of anger is there. And beside that, many of you are familiar with that. In the USA also, that's another problem. They even say, you know, that black people, they can't, <laughs> they're not able to, to fix their own issue or even to solve their own issue by talking. They can't do that. Everything turned into problem. Come on, family, say something. Especially our people from the U.S. In Geta, <laughs> in Geta I will admit, um, me, I kind of been up and down roller coaster. Uh, I can be angry, but at the same time, I can't. Me, I feel like I love heart, and I just be trying to like uh, have people see the same picture that I see. And just under, like, because I would say that all the time, like, I have a lot of aunties and uncles, and they act like little kids. And I'm like, I don't understand it. And that frustrates me. And then I get frustrated. So it's like, now I'm just having to learn, like, I can't elect, I can't let their habits, I can't act like them. Like, I noticed that when I lived far away from them and I actually didn't hang around them, I wasn't like that. I was happy. I was always joyful. I was in good spirits. And then when I became around them, I started to act just like them, argue and yell and be angry. And then I just started to finally realize, like, this is not how a family should function. Like, I would be around other people's family and see how they function, where they so calm and communicate with each other and laugh. And then I go back to my family. And I'm just like, this is not right. Like, this is not how family is supposed to function. Yeah. And so I would cry and cry for it and fight for it. But now I'm just understanding, like, I just have to let it be. And just really pray for them. Now I just I try to stay away from them as much as I can because it's just it's very toxic. Wow, thank you very much, Sister Trish. That's very toxic indeed. That is super toxic. But you know what? <clears throat> Excuse me. The devil is the one in charge. You know how they do? I I, I send you a video on the WhatsApp. You know, for that brother who was a. Uh, he was a was a satanist. He used to command seven thousand witches, you know, on his back. He was a chief, and that that guy say that uh, in order for them to break a family or someone else someone else's life, they study you. The, he say that you know <clears throat> he say he say that the devil will command some agent. To watch over you, your life, and your family bloodline or generation. And they will, they will write a book. A 500-page book, imagine, about you and your life. And after writing, you know, this book, let me say you, you are writing, you, you are walking straight. You have no problem and everything, everything is fine. The devil will command this agent to watch over you and write a book about you and your family life. And they will be searching if there is a problems in your life. I mean, in your, in your, in your lineage, where you come from. 
And until they find just one, just one, they will clear. They will say yes. And one of them is this that we spoke about. Either divorce problem, um, incest problems, poverty problem, anger, singleness, or something like that. Until if they found one, one is enough. That, that's good. And they will attack you through that problem. Especially if it is anger issue that your bloodline had, you know, they will send people in your life to, to provoke you. They will send people in your life to provoke you, to uproot, not to, uh, to, to, they will send people to, in your life to, you know, how can I say? Um, they will send people to provoke you and try to awaken, you know, that anger issue in your bloodline. And guess what? The devil is very patient. He will be behind you, behind you, behind you, behind you. He will try, he will try, he will try until he succeed. That's why the scripture said, be, be, beware of the plot of the devil, of the scheme of the devil. Family, do, do not ignore the devil. That guy was an anointed cherub. He knows a lot. He knows our weak, our, weak, our weak point. Last time, Prince Michael told us, the devil he is not no pro he has no problem to study you for 20 years or even more. Just study you. He doesn't mind to take his time just to study you. To study your life for 20 years plus. So that when he executes his plan, it will be perfect. That's why you see a people or a family that everything was fine, successful, no trouble, but out of the out of nowhere things start to fall apart. Are we together, family? That is why the Bible tells us pray without cease. Pray without cease. Pray always. The world we live in is a spiritual. So do not be ignorant of Satan. Okay. We spoke about divorce, poverty, sickness. Another, another problem is singleness. Their family, their families, you know, none of them get married. They can try by all means, but they cannot succeed. Does anybody know a family who has this kind of problems? Singleness? In Geta. In Geta. Thank you. In Geta. I also know. In Geta. In Geta. In Geta. I also, yeah, also, I also know, know, know a family who has this, this kind of issue. They can't get married. I have a friend. She even told me, I don't know why, but in my family, nobody gets married. They can try. They, and she's, she's, she's also surviving. She's trying all her best, but nothing is working. Do you know why that happened? Demons are in charge. If you are women experiencing these problems, whenever a man tries to approach, to, try to approach you, those people, they, they, they will feel this negative energy Casting them away from you. And sometimes, if there are even many demons, or if the problems that was caused created a huge damage in your family bloodline, some men, the moment they approach to marry you, they will die. The moment the women approach the men, the women will die. That's happened all, a lot. If you know a person having this kind of experience, family, tell them that's not normal. They need the strength from above to overcome that curse. They need healing. They need the deliverance. They need freedom from that. And believe me, they can try by their own strength. They will never succeed at all. Never. 
never. And if you are also one of them, listen to us, well, you must know that something is happening. Something is happening. Not with some not 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 with you, but within your family bloodline, something is wrong. And that thing must be broke, must be break. Okay, next time, I mean next, next, we will speak about breaking the generational curse. We spoke about the problem and stuff, you know. It is amazing to praise the 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 enzyme that we serve, the God we serve, because in him there is a solution for every problem. There is nothing we experience. There is no problem that we face that there is no solution. There is always a, a escape under one condition. Under one condition. Yes. Um Matola. Breaking a generational curse. While your family history has an effect on you, you are not bound by these generational curses. You have the choice to continue in the footsteps of your ancestors and pass on these curses to your children or with great diligence you can end those curses over your life and future. Deuteronomy 30, verse 19. Le vouvre mon. Yalla. 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 This, Yalla. This is the good news. This is the good news. We still have the choice, family, to continue in the same footstep of ancestors and pass down them those curses to our children's children or with great with great diligence we can end those curses over our life and future there is always a solution yes Mamutola. you can decide if the generational curse continues or ends ezekiel 18 1 through 4 ezekiel 5 and 20. there is a great freedom in breaking a generational curse and creating a healthier life for yourself the people you love and the generations to follow yeah yeah. 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 That's the good news, family. Whatever we experience and we feel like a burden, there is always a solution. And you can consult those references, those books as a reference, you know, the book of Deuteronomy 13, 19, and Ezekiel. Deuteronomy 30, 19, you know, there is a passage also that speaks that uh, that's why many people they say, you know. No, the the scene of a father of a parent cannot affect the children. Well, it can. If you read the passage, you know the scripture says that, you know, even in the book of Ezekiel eighteen as well, it says that when a parent sin, if that per that parent, you know, repent and correct. His footstep and leave that life of full of evil, their children will not be killed. Will not be killed with one under one condition. If they also follow the same path of holiness. Mama told her, can you just read uh, Ezekiel 18, please? So that we may get it out. Eight, Very nice. Eight, 18, 1 through 4. Okay. The word of the Most High came to me. What does it mean that you keep quoting this proverb in the land of Isolale? 
when parents eat sour grapes, their children's teeth are set on edge. As I live, says Stephen Zombie, I swear that you will never again quote this proverb any solely. Look, all lives belong to me. Both the parents' life and the children's life are equally mine. So is the person who sins himself who must die. Consider someone who is righteous, who does what is lawful and right. He doesn't eat on the mountain or raise his eyes towards the idol of the house of Isolele. He doesn't defile his neighbor's wife or touch a woman during her time of menstrual impurity. He doesn't wrong anyone. He returns any pledge property a debtor has given as a collateral for a loan. He takes nothing by robbery, but gives his food to the hungry and clothing to those who need it. He neither demands nor accepts interest on a loan. He refrains from what is evil and he judges honestly between one person and another. In short, he lives according to my laws and observes my rulings so as to act faithfully. Such a person is righteous and he will certainly live, says the limo. That's the condition. That person shall, shall live. Of course, if you're righteous and you obey your children to be righteous, of course, the lineage will be clean. Okay, Mama Tola, continue now to 10. Now, suppose he is a father of a son who is a robber, a murderer, or does any of these things to a brother. Whereas the father himself does none of them. He eats on the mountains. He defiles his neighbor's wife, wrongs the poor and the needy, takes by robbery, doesn't restore pledged property, raises his eyes towards the idols, engage in disgusting practices, demands and accepts interest, should he live? He will not live because he has engaged in all these disgusting practices. He must be put to death. Mm -hmm. His blood is on him. And the question is, you know, the father was clean, had no evil in him, right? And now the children is evil, do a lot of wicked stuff. And the scripture says this son will die. Why? Because he's evil. Now imagine the seed of this son who is evil family. The children of this son who is evil. If this, if him as a parent was doing all this evil act, how about his seed? And sometimes the problem is not the lineage. The problem is what you will teach your children. That's the main problem. That's why the scripture said, you know, Hosea, you know, Hosea, Hosea 4, 6. You know, there is a very, there's something very important in which, in which sometimes, I don't know if we do understand. It says as follow. My people are being destroyed because they do not, they don't know me. Since you, you priests refuse to know me, I refuse to recognize you as my priest. Since you have forgotten the law of your God, I will forget to bless your children. You see, that is where, that is when the problem comes. As we said, if you don't know anything, all you know is wicked. What will you teach your children? Same thing. Same thing. If the fruit, I mean, if, if the tree is bad, you know, it can't give birth to a good tree. 
or it's give can give birth to a good good fruit. The problem is what you will teach your children. That is when the big deal start. That's why in the book of Isaiah, that's what I'm saying, because you don't know nothing, I will refuse you and I will refuse your children as well. I don't know, family, is that clear? Because we are up running out of time. We we'll must move on. We can get that. Uh, brother, brother Benika, can I have the what's the the chapter in the um the verse for Isaiah where he says that? Oh, that's Hosea, Hosea six, Hosea. Sorry, Hosea four, Hosea four, six, chapter four, verse six. Okay, in Ginta, thank you. Thank you very much. We we must know. So that we can teach our children family. Because if we don't know anything, and we and we teach anything to our children in which we do not know, we taught them nothing. Yes, Mama Tola, can you move on, please, for us to finish? Because our time is already gone. You can jump to the next slide, please. Okay. Can you go to the image first, Mama Tola? The previous page. Okay. This title now, you know, we speak about begin the healing process or the healing journey. You know, whoever is experiencing this kind of problems, as we say, there is still a solution. And this is how the solution starts. You must search. You know, Psalms, you know, 139, David said, O Tatan Zambia, search me and see if there is an evil, if there is evil, you know, hidden within me. Because David knew I'm a man. Maybe something is wrong within me and in, in which I do not know. So please search me, go deep inside and search until you find any evil, wicked, Stuff within me. And this is how, family, the healing process starts. That is the point of your prayer, to break this generational curse. In your prayer, that is your request. You will base yourself in the book of Psalms, you know, 139, by asking the Tanzanian to send through your Holy Spirit, through his Holy Spirit, to search from, you know, your great, 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 great grand grandparent. Your grandma, your grandpa, your daddy, your mom, and you. Ask him to search. Because even if you try to search by yourself, you won't succeed. Because, you know, most of us, we know of our great, 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 great grandparent. We didn't know. We, we have even no idea who they are. And we have no record about them. But by asking in prayer, the spirit of, of Tatanzambe is, is able to reveal to us what is wrong. We must start from our lineage. Tell him that I'm search my lineage, shake my lineage and see if there is an evil. And if there is an evil, please, Tatanzambe, have mercy. And start the prayer point. Next slide, Mama Tola. You know, and when you when you pray for on, on behalf of your of your ancestor, don't forget to mention yourself as well. Because sometimes we pray a lot about them, and maybe the problem is in us. Don't forget to mention us in problem. I mean, you, if it is me, I cannot forget to mention myself. You know, I will ask the most high to search my family lineage, but I will also ask him to search me. And if there is any evil. I have committed back in the days, knowing or unknowingly, conscious or unconsciously. You have to ask if there is any, any covenant done with the spirit of death, of, with the spirit of divorce, of the, with the spirit of alcohol, tobacco, drugs abuse, anything, any problem that you're experiencing. Ask him if there is any pact, any covenant that your forefathers or even yourself have signed Knowing or knowingly, conscious or consciously, because sometimes our parents or us, we do business with the devil in dreams. 
and we think, oh, that was just a dream. But we, we, we didn't even know that we have signed a contract with him. And now problems start in our family. That's why we say do not despise dream. Dreams are blessing and dangerous as well, if you ignore them. And if you do things in dream, you know, blindly, it is possible for your forefathers to accept or to sign a contract with the devil through dream. It is possible for you and me also to accept a sign with the devil through dream, to accept, to uh, uh, assign, I mean, a contract with the devil through dreams, knowing or knowingly. That's why you must be vigilant. If you're vigilant, our spirit in a dream will fight and will refuse to sign anything similar. And so those are the steps, family, you know, in which you can follow so that you can um, identify, you know, the, 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 the generational curses, you know, reflect, you know, um, Mama Tola, can you go please very, very fast on those, those, those notes? Begin the healing journey. One, reflect. Reflect on the existing generational curse in your life. How do they manifest in you and your family? Two, investigate. Investigate your own life. Do your behaviors, lifestyles reflect bad patterns? What destructive actions have you learned from older generations in your family? Mm -hmm. For many, you know, everywhere, but I will mention, especially in the USA, you know, dr drug dealers, you know, selling drugs or, you know, um, having many children and not assuming them and stuff. Stop that. And many other things as well. We must think about all those things. Yes, Mama Tola, please. Three, identify. Identify the ways you want your life and behaviors to be different. Pray. Pray for the strength to fight ingrained habits. The full surrender. Confess the sins of, you, of your sinning parents to God the Father. Mm -hmm. That's the big one. That is the big one. That's why, remember, the book of Daniel 9, 3. The book of Nehemiah as well, the book of Ezra, you will find they are always pleading the mercy of Nzambi. And they will say, oh, the Nzambi, oh, God, you know, our father, our, our kings, our princes, our fathers, all of them, they have seen refusing the words from your servant, the prophet. Have mercy upon them and forgive us as well. This is this one is the, is the top one, is the main one. Confess the sins of your sinning parent or ancestors to God. Yes, Mamutola. Be willing to fully forgive your sinning parent. Break any ungodly soul ties with the sinning parent. Mm -hmm. Words contain power. Words contain power. Whenever you pray, say also, Tatanzami, please break. Anything my father have done, knowing or knowingly, break it. Yes? Break the curse. Break the curse line of the demons. Oh, not, a, not another thing. You know, family, many families are tormented by demons. The problem is that they, they are not able to see those demons, but they are tormented by demons. Many families are tormented by demons, many. If you read the book of the book of Tobit, you will understand. There was a lady, this lady was called Sarah. Every man she get married to, when they come to, to, to have intercourse, the men will die. Every man, all of them, they will die. And there was a demon. That demon, uh, you know, I don't want to mention his name, but you, if you read, you will, you will you will find it. That demon was present in the life of that lady and was killing all the men who tried to approach her. She will get married. The moment they go the room, the men will die. Until Angel Raphael was saint 
to bind that demon because that lady, she prayed. Sarah, she, she was in desperation. She, she prayed. She prayed a lot. She prayed a lot. And Jonathan Samuel heard a prayer and sent Angel Raphael to deliver her. Yes, Mimitola. Verbally command the demons to leave you alone and depart from your bloodline. Mm -hmm. Verbally command. Words are power. Command verbally. Especially at midnight, you know. Especially um, um, on the doorway, you know, 3 a.m., 4 a.m. Command. Say with your word. Say it. Pray. Command. Demons of lust, leave me. Demon of divorce, leave my house. Leave my family bloodline. So command, use the power of the words. Just command, say all the problem you're experiencing. You know, family, let me tell you something. You can, sometimes you can deliver yourself. Sometimes, I'm not saying always it will be like this, no, but sometimes you don't need a pastor. Sometimes you don't need, you don't need nobody to deliver you. You are able, you are capable to deliver you from, from, from your problem. Yala. 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 But the big issue we don't, we don't Yala. believe that. The big problem is that we don't believe that. We believe that, no, I think it's only, you know, uh, Pastor X, Bishop X who can pray for me. What about if I say even if you pray, your prayer has more power than your own pastor? Why? It is easier you to break your own, your, concur, your own curses. Why? Because you are connected to your family bloodline. You are connected. A pastor mm -hmm. is not connected to, to your bloodline. I'm not saying that their prayer is not, is, is not, is not important. I'm not saying that our prayer is not It is. We can pray for you and stuff. But your own prayer has also a lot of power. Why? Because you are connected through blood to your parent, to your grandfather, to your ancestor. You know, in Africa, we say that uh, sometimes I cannot blow through your mind, through your mouth. You must blow. Family, do you understand? That, that, that's how you say in English, Brad Saba. Can you help me out? That's how we say in English? In English, in English we say you got to want it. You got to want okay. it for yourself to make it happen. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. You know, yeah. I tried to translate from Portuguese to English. <laughs> say it again, Sister, Sister Trish. First, you got to want it for yourself to make it happen. You have to, you got to what? You got to want it for yourself to make it happen. I always say that to people because we, we call it peer pressure when you try to force somebody into something. So I always tell, like me, I always grew up giving people advice, but I tell them first, you got to want it. I can't force you to do anything. So you got to want it for yourself before, you know, anybody help. So it makes sense that, yeah, you have to pray for yourself. That's why I, I, now I'm understanding more why you said this when we pray. You always say, then we pray. Don't, you know, ask people for prayers when you're not even praying for yourself. So this makes a lot of sense. Yes, sister. That makes sense. Thank you very much for that cl clarification, family. You know, now... Those who like to ask for prayer, pastor, pray for me. Men of God, pray for me. Stop it, please. Pray for yourself. Because in most cases, or in some cases, I would say, in some cases, your own prayer will be more powerful than your, than your pastor's prayer. Because the pastor can pray for you. But if you're not willing to pray for yourself, if you are not willing to be delivered and to be free, the pastor can't do nothing. That's why, you know, Christ, Christ, whenever he comes to heal somebody, he will ask, do you want to be healed? Family, isn't it? <laughs> but you, you see me, you look at me, I need healing. Why are you asking me if I want to be healed? Why are you asking me? Just heal me. And he said, no. First of all, I need you. You must confess through your mouth that you want, not the spiritual family. There was an, this event, you know, 
This sister, she was being initiated in the kingdom of darkness. When she entered in the room of the Satanist and demons, they put her on a, on a, in a circle. You know, how do, how, I don't know how you call that name, you know, that circle, they draw and stuff. And now a demon told her, she was brought by a friend. Now a demon told her, so, do you want to join us? And our friend said, yes, she wants to join. The demon said, shut up. Excuse me for the language, but that's what the demon said. Keep quiet. Let her speak through her own mouth. You cannot speak for herself. Let herself speak through her own mouth. Because if somebody says for you on your behalf, it won't have any effect. But you must confess through your mouth and say yes or no. That's why when Christ, whenever he will come to heal somebody, will ask, do you want to be healed? Do you want to be healed? And something the person will explain a lot. Oh, you know, I've been sick for many, 10 years and stuff. Okay, I know that. But the question is, do you want to be healed? You must confess because your word is power. Whether you say no or yes, if you say yes, you know, Automatically, the power of that enzyme will consume you and it will deliver you from all harms. Okay. Yes. Um, family, the rest you can follow. You know, uh, I don't know if you still have, we have something. Okay, we have the last one. Or Tola, can you jump to the next one, please? Um, Track change. Use a journal or something else and track your feelings and, cha and changes in your life and celebrate the small changes and success in your deliverance, in your deliverance process as you transition away from generational curses. In get that. In get the Next slide, Matola. Next slide, please. Conclusion. Finally, when the notion of generational curses is foreign to scripture, there is a sense in which the curse of sin has been passed on from one generation to generation. Through the first Adam, all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God, Romans 3.23. Through the second Adam, Messiah, Christ, atonement is offered to all says Paul, just as the result of one trespass was condemnation for all men, so also the result of one act of righteousness was justification that brings life for all men. Romans 5.18 Through no act of our own, we are condemned. Likewise, through no act of our own, we are saved. Romans 5, 12 through 21. Curse has a healing solution. And his name is Nzambi Ampungu Tulindo. God Almighty. Zechariah 9, 11 through 12. Ngeta. Ngeta. Yalla. 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 This is the good news. This is the good news from Ambassy Akongo, the Andotila. If you never heard, if you never learned this in churches, don't get made to your pastor, right? They didn't know. And they can't give you anything they do not know. They can't give you anything. They can't, they don't know how to, they do not know how to give you. Don't get mad at them. But all praise is Nzabia Pungo through his Holy Spirit who reveals all these things to his children. Through one man, you know, cursed has entered into humankind. And through one man also the scripture said, you know, we are given the option to redeem ourselves. Through your father or your mother curses has entered into your family. And guess what? Through you, you know, it takes a lot of beliefs, family. It takes a lot of strength to believe that. But if you believe, you will see the transformation. 
Doesn't matter whoever, you know, brought curse to your family. If a curse entered your family through your grandfather, your grandmother, through one person, which is you, blessing can also overtake your family. Yeah, Allah. Yeah. Do, do we know that we can change the course of our family? Do, do we know that we, you know, you, yourself, you, do you believe that you can change the course of your own, not your, not only your family, those who are alive, your entire lineage, even your parents, your ancestors who have already died, they can be redeemed, whether they have seen or not, whether they have seen, whether they are, living you know in the world of the dead in the bottom you know in the bottomless in the waterless pit whether they are there do you believe that through you they can be saved god says we are saved through his hire this is where the concept of we are the messiah comes from are we understanding our family Yes. This is the reason yes, some people yes, they say this is the reason some people they say now we are Messiah. All of us we are Messiah. Why? Because we have received Messiah and he has made us just like him to do what? To save also our family, our entire family. You know, the you know, family. Whoever is in the right standing with the most high, the moment you stand in the, in the right position. Spiritually, the, the, the entire soul of your family members, whether they are alive or they are dead, all of them, they will depend on you. All of them. Those who are in the, in the world of the dead, they will be praying, Oh, I'm a good pray for us. Oh, please pray for us. Oh, Matuzala, pray for us. I hope she pray for us. They are praying. They wish you can pray for them. Always. That's why we still pray for the dead. Those who died, and we know they were not in line with the word, we still pray for them. For the Tatan Zambi may have mercy and save them. So, Matan Masakaria family, the last point is the curse has a healing solution. Zechariah 9 11, that is a promise. Because of the covenant that the Zambia has done, has made with our forefathers, solution will always be available. But solution is a choice. Whether if you want to remain or you want to be free from that generational curse, it's up to you. It is a choice. We must be committed. And this is not the simple stuff. We must be serious about this. This is not a plain, no. It's not a game. A plain, plain, no. We must be committed and serious about this. Why? Because the demons, they don't play. Demons, they do not play. And human beings, they suffer a lot because we are always ignorant. We take everything, you know, uh, as a joke. Sometimes we don't take things serious. That's why demons, they play. So, Matun Masaka family, I hope this message has blessed you today. Yato Samba. We'll finish when we say Yamana Yamana Vela. May the Tazam bless us all and search deep down through in our bloodline and in us if there is an evil and may he, may, may, may he uproot, may, may he unplug that evil and cast it out. And get that. Mm, get that. Ingeta. 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 Ingeta.